Hello, and welcome to episode 20 of the Teacher's Tea Time podcast. My name is Mark, and I hope you're doing well. This podcast is about, by, and for anyone who has ever had anything to do with schools and education. That's probably almost everybody. Topics and content in this podcast are listener-generated. They come from listeners just like yourself. We are proud to be a member of Adjacent, a design collaborative made up of educators who dream of a better world for our students and their teachers. Learn more at adjacent.org. I have a mug of tea ready, so let's sit back, relax, and get on with the show. Well, this is a celebratory episode. It was about a year ago that the Teacher's Tea Time podcast was launched, and this is our 20th episode. We've had short stories, teacher's stories, news about the latest goings-on in education, while all the time we've maintained a focus on schools as communities, whether they meet in per- person or virtually. We've been downloaded just under 400 times. Our most downloaded episode was episode 3, when we asked for students' perspectives on the abrupt switch to remote learning when COVID first struck. Episode 14, our first pub talk, was the second most popular, popular episode. With episode 15, Doug Wren's teacher story, A Career in Education, our third most popular. Did you know the podcast has been listened to in the US, Canada, the UK, Australia, India, Japan, Russia, Brazil, and Spain? Here in the US, we have a footprint in Virginia, Kansas, Texas, Michigan, California, Washington State, Colorado, Nebraska, Missouri, Illinois, Minnesota, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, Maryland, Georgia, Alabama, Connecticut, Massachusetts, North Carolina, New Jersey, and Oregon. Wherever you are listening, thank you for supporting the podcast by taking an interest. It is so much appreciated. Please don't forget to subscribe using the links in the show notes on the website, and please tell your friends. This year we have more stories from the classroom, more interviews with educators, more pub talks, and more about schools and communities. We'll also have a periodical feature focusing on the history of education. How did we develop the education system that we have? I'm looking forward to putting that one together. As always, I love to hear your stories from school, as teachers, as parents, and as students past and present. Feel free to share your stories with me at teacherstetimepod at gmail.com. Anyway, as we're in a celebratory mood, let's have a couple of school stories. So this first story came uh, from a chat I had with a friend of mine who reminded me of this one that I told him a while ago. We both used to be world history teachers to high school freshmen and sophomores here in the States. Um, so that would be the equivalent of years 9 and 10 back in England. And uh, you know, it's 14, 15 year olds. And it seems to me that most of the stories I end up telling often are about 14 and 15 year olds. Even when I think back to my own school days, the funniest stuff happened with 14 and 15. I really don't know why that is. Anyway, here's a story, and I'm quoting the words he used to me. It says, it was early in the school year. We were just beginning a unit on the Renaissance. The 10th grade course began with the Renaissance and went all the way up to the modern world. The 9th grade course ended with the Renaissance, so most of what we were covering was already familiar to the kids. For my introductory lesson, I thought I would hook the students' interest by focusing on just how groundbreaking the Renaissance really was. I created a slideshow of all the cool architecture, the art, the inventions of the era, editing it all into a movie trailer. And this was before cool apps like iMovie, so it took some doing. I thought it was a good thing to do. It looked really good. And then my lesson focused on the main man of the Renaissance, Leonardo da Vinci. With the class, we played a game called Leonardo or Leonardon't where we would see pictures of modern day inventions like the tank, the helicopter and stuff like that. And the class would decide if it was an idea that he had, Leonardo, or that he didn't have, Leonardo. Then we would do some investigation into his life and it made for a fun lesson and the students were usually quite engaged. Anyway, in the second lesson, the plan was for the students to create inventions of their own that could help improve the modern world and then write them up into a codex similar to that of Leonardo, with sketches, backwards writing, just like he did. But first, we would review the content of the previous lesson. 
I asked for someone to explain what the Renaissance was, and several students were able to explain successfully. I then asked for some examples of art, architecture, artifacts from the era, and many were able to give us some examples that they saw in the video in the lesson before. And then the big question, the one that would show if they were paying attention. So, can anyone name the man who pretty much embodied the Renaissance? You know, a Renaissance man? To which Madison raised her hand. Now Madison, for the purpose of this story, this isn't her real name. She never would raise her hand. She was a great student. Great, a great student, excellent. But she was quiet and she was shy. Noticing her hand up, I jumped at the chance for this softly spoken, shy student to contribute. Surely she would feel so much better and gain confidence in speaking out with this opportunity. And I had visions of this being a life-changing moment for her, happening right now, in my classroom. Madison, I said confidently, go ahead and tell us who we reckon is the man who defines the Renaissance. With a smile and a loud, confident voice, Madison piped up, Leonardo DiCaprio. Welcome back. So here's another story from the annals, and this one's from my personal collection. I call it Mashed Potatoes, but it's not really a story about mashed potatoes. But it does have an impact, and it has an impact on my own family. So I think it's a really important one to share on this 20th episode, and one year anniversary of the podcast. So, if you were to come to my classroom now, before a class starts, you normally hear music playing from my phone. I tend to put it on shuffle play and like any one of 5,000 tracks might come on. It's like digital musical Russian roulette. It makes for interesting conversations with students asking what's playing and how old is that again? I think it's important to educate young people about real music. Well, back in the 90s, I was a second year teacher and I was about to have a challenging, well, when I reflect on the personalities of the class, it actually turned out to me my all time favorite class of year nines, ninth graders, 14 again. Gosh, it's always ninth grade. Anyway, it was after lunch when the students were about to come to class. And as this was the days before Wi-Fi, before the internet, before smartphones and stuff like that, we had old fashioned media in our classrooms. We had televisions, video cassette recorders, and radio cassette players. And it wasn't unusual for us to have the radio on as the kids came in at the beginning of class. And as this was the end of lunch hour, it was playing as they straggled in. I used to have it tuned to a commercial station that played the latest music. Remember, this was the mid-90s. Grunge has just happened. Britpop Brit -pop was just beginning. It was a great time for music. And I'd probably argue that music has never been as good as it was then. Or maybe that's just me looking back at things through my prism of age. Anyway. Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit was playing on the radio as the students were coming in. Some were bopping a bit. Some of them asked if I could turn it up. And as I was a bit of a Nirvana fan, I duly obliged. Then Gemma bounded in. Gemma, as we shall call her for this story, was gregarious, bordering on boisterous, and liked to make an entrance. She particularly enjoyed making an entrance if she was fashionably late for class, as she was in this instance. So she came through the door, and she heard what was playing, and her face lit up. Oh! That's the mashed potato song! I love the mashed potato song! What? said I, and about 20 of the class at the same time. It's the mashed potato song! Listen to the chorus! And as the chorus began, she started screaming along with the late, great Kurt Cobain. Here they are now, mashed potatoes! I like eating mashed potatoes with some gravy. Mashed potatoes. I like eating mashed potatoes. Yeah. You see, she said, it's the mashed potato song. And you know what? I think she was convinced that they might be actually the genuine lyrics. So ever since then, Smells Like Teen Spirit is forever the mashed potato song. And we can thank Gemma for planting that earworm forever evermore. So that was episode 20, an anniversary episode of the Teacher's Tea Time podcast. 
This podcast is a proud member of Adjacent, a design collaborative made up of educators who dream of a better world for our students and their teachers. We create, write, talk, teach, and learn about the things that matter in education. To find out more, point your browser to www.adjacent.org. That's www.edjacent.org. For me, it's the stories of teachers, students, and school communities that matter. As such, this podcast is only possible with the help and support of its listeners. Please leave positive reviews wherever you are able. If you're an iTunes or Spotify subscriber, leaving a good review can really help our visibility. Also, please don't keep this podcast to yourself. Tell your friends to subscribe and listen too. One thing we all have in common is that we've all been to school. So if you'd like to contribute to the pod in any way, if you have a story to share, long, short, tragic, or comic, if you have comments to make about the podcast, or just want to say hi, you can send an email to teachersteatimepod at gmail.com. I love to read what you have to say. Or if social media is your thing, you can follow me on Twitter at Mark Diacop, and on Instagram at Mark Diacopoulos. You can find suggestions for topics, copies of the show notes, and you can download previous episodes of the podcast at www.teacherstetimepod.com. The podcast artwork was created by Phaedra. Opening and closing music is by Brian Boyko. It's been my pleasure to be your host today. Thank you for listening. Mm-hmm.